The University of Maryland School of Public Health is hosting its fourth symposium on environmental justice and health disparities. That's right, Monica. The event will focus on solutions for issues affecting our area. Here to talk more about it is Dr. Shakobi Wilson. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let's kind of start off about uh, talking a little bit about the event and what it is. So we have a symposium that we've been trying to do um, several years at the University of Maryland College Park. And the focus is on environmental justice and health issues. For the audience, that's about looking at how some communities do the race, ethnicity, do the class, do the geography, may be overburdened by environmental hazards and locally wanted land uses. That could be chemical plants, factories, heavily tra traffic roadways. It could be chicken farms on the eastern shore. It could be concrete block plants, concrete batching plants. It could be gas fire facilities. It could be coal fire power plants. These are all facilities that emit pollutions to the air pollutants of the air, water, and soil, and those pollutants can impact human health. In addition, these are communities that may be overburdened by psychosocial stressors, so crime, violence, you know, exposure to discrimination and ism. And then those communities are the same communities that may have lack of access to good infrastructure. So do you have a grocery store in your neighborhood? Do you have a supermarket? Do you have a park? Do you have infrastructure that helps to make your community a healthy ecosystem? So those are the issues that we're focused on at this symposium. Gotcha. In an article in the Post, Dr. Wilson, you used the term citizen scientists. Yes. What is, how, explain that. So the whole idea is we have science is for everybody. Mm -hmm. So citizen science is about democratization of science, open science, making sure that your grandma, grandpa, your, your youngest child, uh, your cousin, everybody can use science. Science is not just for people with PhDs, but citizen science is really about how can we use science for action? science for the people. So it's really about bringing science to community organizing and civic engagement to translate the data to action. It's about the values that we bring to the science and the value of science. Science is not just good enough to do science. What is that science doing for the people? And the citizen science is about training everyday residents everyday citizens to use science for change. Okay, so to piggyback on what Monica just asked you and then what you were talking about in terms of action, what do you want me, what do you want her, what do you want the folks out there to do on a day-to-day -day basis having to do with um, protecting the environment? So if you think about you know, the environment and human health, some of us live in communities like Langley Park where there's a lot of traffic. So do you know what you've been exposed to? Maybe your kid's asthma attack was due to pollution levels. Maybe the particular matter, the dust in the air, is what caused that asthma attack. So citizen science is about collecting your own data so you can actually impact your exposure behavior. But more importantly, what can we do together as a community to reduce exposures? Traffic calming. Maybe we need to change zoning. Maybe we shouldn't put industry right by, right by side communities. Maybe we didn't know, hey, this is a quality of our environment. Let's look at the quality environment, see how it's impacting human health. So it's really about using that data for action, using that data for policy, using that data for new regulations, using that data to make sure that communities are healthy communities, that they're just communities. There are some communities that don't have access to the grocery stores. We can map that. Citizens can map that. They may not have access to green space. Citizens can map that. So using that data to change the communities for the better. So citizen scientists, Dr. Wilson, are one thing, and they can use their powers and go to the polls, but what would you like to see legislators do in terms of this cause? I think there are many issues in the state of Maryland that uh, legislators have an opportunity to focus on. We have issues still around lead. Mm -hmm. We have schools where children cannot uh, drink water at their schools, and we know lead is a very, very toxic uh, chemical that can impact the developing the brain. It can lead to IQ deficits, so addressing that issue. We have issues in some communities where it's the cumulative impacts of multiple hazards. Once you get one hazard, you get two. Once you get two, you get three. Once you get three, you get four. So those communities are con consistently being dumped on. Let's stop dumping on communities, all in the guise of economic development. Bring our communities good jobs, career letter jobs. Make our communities safe and healthy and not bring in jobs that actually lead to economic downturn and more economic distress. So that's another issue they can work on. And then let's do something for our children when it comes to make sure our children are in toxic environments. How can we put America first if we don't put our kids first? Hmm. So we have children on school buses where they've been uh, exposed to diesel exhaust, which messes with concentration, coordination, leads to nausea, fatigue. So your kids are going to school and can't learn because they, they, they cap. It's been a cap on their capacity to learn. Children living in environments where housing stock, they may be exposed to lead, but also biological agents like mold and mildew. Maybe there's physical agents, noise. So let's address those issues to protect our children. 
Okay, and we wow. know that you are focusing on the younger generation as part of this symposium. In fact, um, Destiny Watford, your keynote speaker, mm -hmm. she had a big hand in preventing an incinerator from coming close to her community. So kind of talk about how you want the young folks to, to take this baton and keep running. I mean, so part of this, this, this uh, event is about social justice, environmental justice movement. The environmental justice movement is the child of the civil rights movement. And we know with most social movements, either you have ch young folks that are engaged or older folks. Some of us in the middle, we may not be as fully engaged. But young people are the future. Young people are the present. We see young folks out there right now fighting when it comes to gun violence. Similarly, you have people like Destiny as a 17-year-old uh, high school student wow. fought and stopped an incinerator. She won the Goldman Prize for North America, which is basically the Nobel Peace Prize of environmental activism in 2016. Wow. That's the power of one person, and that's the power of young people. Right. That is awesome. Dr. That Wilson. is amazing. All right, we're going to tell people how they can uh, take part in this event. The event will be held May 12th from 9 to 5 at the Stamp Student Union and is open to the public and, of course, as at the University of Maryland. And the information, check all this out. Is it on your screen? There it is. In case you want to find out more about it, you can check that out.